And joining us today on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a woman who's uh, put together a very interesting book as we head into the uh, summer outdoor cooking season. It's called Cooking with Fire, Learn the uh, Far Beyond the Backyard Barbecue, Learning the Ancient Art of Live Fire Cooking. And we're joined today by food historian. She's also a uh, food editor for Edible South Shore Magazine. And Paula Mark, who joined us on the telephone today. Paula, thanks for being with us. How are you? Great. It's great to be here. Thanks. Yeah, we're going to have a chance to chat with you for a few minutes. Uh, have opportunity to, to kind of look through the book. Now, i got to say, I've, I've never been that uh, handy with outdoor cooking, so you, you, you're teaching me a few things. I guess there's a lot of people out there that may not have the, uh, the knowledge to really do it well, right? Well, I, I hope that the book will bring something to everyone, from people that have never made a fire before, even kids, uh, to uh, seasoned chefs that uh, also may not have dabbled in exactly this type of cooking. There's uh, so much of this comes from a deep past that really has we've lost the continuity to, and uh, so I'm hoping that it'll resurrect some of that for people. Yeah, and a lot of people may do do camping, and, and that is an outdoor type of cooking. But this is a little more like building uh, building the uh, I guess the the term is what a uh, a tenor. Is that right? Am I pronouncing that right? Uh, yeah, that's one part of it. That's a very, very ancient, a tenor is a very ancient type of oven that uh, operates by sort of accelerating the draft through a clay cylinder. So you're actually uh, swinging a type of dough, basically a simple dough for making the bread like naan, that you're slapping the dough against the inside of the cylinder where the fire is just roaring pretty much up towards it and even by it. And it makes incredibly flavorful bread. Um, that takes a little bit more doing than many of the recipes in the book, which are made very simply with very, very little equipment, very few tools. Uh, and that I, you know, I hope people will try. Some of them are just so simple they require just a stick. Uh, others, a simple thing like a, um, a grill that you might prop up on a couple of bricks over some nice hardwood poles uh, to make bread or grill um, or cook vegetables or meat or shellfish. It's amazing to think that, uh, like you said, obviously back in the, in the uh, ancient days, and uh, I guess not too long far back, really before there was electricity and gas cooking, people had to cook this way. No matter, depending what part of the country you lived in, you had to cook outside most of the time, I guess. And, and just, right. instead of heating things up, you had to bake bread and, and do that. So uh, interesting ways that they came up with cooking. Right, we're talking about not just in this country, but all around the world, basically for hundreds of generations, thousands of generations, uh, many, many centuries, uh, millennia, people have been cooking only with fire. And we're the exceptions to come up into a world where really no one has to, knows how to do it anymore. It's how everyone cooked until really a couple of generations ago. So in throwing out the fire, we've thrown out a lot of techniques and flavors that uh, I think we could easily get back to, and a lot of fun, too. Uh, some of this stuff is just so, it's so contagious, the fun of it, um, that people just can't like, help but get involved in it. Um, and instead of performing a meal for your friends, you're actually collaborating in a meal with your friends, uh, whether it's making a clam bake or, um, or barbecue or um, maybe uh, even building a wood fired oven that you might eventually uh, make pizza in or bread. Whenever I've been to barbecues, and you kind of point out in the book, uh, the food always seems to taste better. I don't know if that's because we're outside, maybe having a better time than normal, but, but it does seem to taste better. Is there anything to that? No. I think it tastes better because it is better. <laughs> I really, uh, I'm, I'm utterly convinced that uh, the same foods cooked uh, with these different technologies, you, if you cook it with a, a gas stove, even a gas grill, which I kind of object to, it just will never in a million years be as good as something that you uh, cook over live coals by fire. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, uh, something about being outdoors, or even if it's uh, you know in, in, under a shed or something, but cooking with fire does make it taste better. Particularly meat, I would think. But I, I guess bread and, and other items would be the same thing, right? Yes, even bread, <laughs> even bread that's baked in a heat that in an oven that cooks with retained heat. So the fire's not even in the oven anymore. Basically, you've heated up this clay oven or brick oven and removed the fire and cleaned it all out and then put the bread in and closed the door. So there's no fire touching the bread. Still, the quality is so superior. Uh, the flavor is just so great. The crust is so crispy and crunchy and just wonderful. So it's, hard. it's not sometimes with live fire, it's the searing of the fire. You get a true sear on the meat and that's really delicious. But uh, in other times, it's really just the quality that fire gives to the, the tool that you're cooking with. Now, I don't know a lot about cooking. I know a little bit about it, but how, how do you kind of gauge uh, temperatures? That's one thing cooks want to know, you know, 
350 degrees for a certain amount of time. How do you do that when you're deal, dealing with a fire uh, outside? <laughs> if you're roasting, say you're um, roasting a chicken on a spit next to a, a fire, you're not roasting over the fire. The fire's sort of off to a side, and you're pulling coals out from under it. And you just look at that chicken, and you're turning it now and again. And if it starts to get too dark, because you want it to cook all the way through and just be perfectly done on the inside and the outside, um, if it, you just um, move it further away. <laughs> it's really the older it's doing. It doesn't really matter what the number is. You know, the, the actual temperature is irrelevant. You just want to see what it's doing to the food and act accordingly and, and uh, compensate for it. So you can infinitely control the temperature of, of your of your element of fire when you're using actual fire. It's much more adaptable, really, once you've paid attention to it and really paying attention to it is key. Once you do that, you'll find that it's, it's much more precise than using uh, an implement like an electric or gas stove to cook with. You got a lot of great recipes in the book, not only for cooking different types of meat, but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting some of the, the breakfast dishes you had in there, pancakes and different types of biscuits and that kind of thing, and all those you can cook outdoors as well or in, in a fire oven. Sure, and these are not, not even in the oven, just on a griddle. It doesn't even have to be a real griddle. You can just use a slab of iron or still steel, um, but there are plenty of cheap griddles around. Uh, you just uh, make a nice fire and pull some coals out. Uh, use a couple of bricks uh, to support the griddle and the coals underneath, and you can make delicious scones. Which scones historically originated on a griddle, and we've moved them into an oven since then, but uh, for many, many um, generations, scones were made on a bake stone made of stone and then of metal uh, in the British Isles. Or, uh, as you say, biscuits can be made in a, a really great biscuits in a bake kettle. That's something that in the 19th century Americans used uh, all over the country in places where they were moving around so much, uh, and they were, so they were using these bake kettles when they didn't have an oven properly to bake in, or didn't want to bother firing up a whole brick oven. Uh, you basically make a fire and build up some coals, take coals and put them under the kettle and put your bread or biscuits in the kettle, and then put the lid on, and these lids are made to retain, to hold the coals up there. So you pile another shovel full of coals on top of the, uh, the lid of the kettle, and uh, it makes a tiny little oven inside this heavy cast iron pot, and mm. uh, things bake really nicely, and they're surprisingly delicious uh, the way that comes out. And that's a very strong 19th century American uh, uh, <laughs> tree. And you got some uh, directions and, and great pictures in here. People show people how to build uh, the ovens, the different types of uh, outdoor ovens as well. So that's going to come in handy. But uh, I know there's also people think, well, I'm cooking with fire. Uh, it could be a little dangerous. You got some uh, tips on uh, safety? It's simple. I, I use, usually, of course, um, common sense helps. Uh, no fires and, you know, very, very windy conditions, that's the main thing. Um, but also, a fire that's so large that it's going to be dangerous is going to be too large to cook over, really. If um, <laughs> things cook in a gentle heat, you might need to burn down a fire for a few minutes to make some coals, but there are very few recipes in the book that you need an inferno for. Most of the time, an inferno is not really helpful in terms of actually making dinner. Sometimes that can be entertaining, but it's not, uh, not really a cooking fire. Uh, it's uh, really just common sense uh, in keeping uh, the fire away from inflammable things around it and really um, controlling the fire and using it to, to help you cook and, and not to endanger yourself and others. <laughs> Well, great information in the book. Again, a lot of recipes and uh, kind of showing you how to put the, the cooking apparatus together. It's called Cooking with Fire. We've been talking with uh, Paula Marcoux today. And uh, Paula, I know the book just came out doing very well, but uh, give out a website if you like where people can get it. Uh, well, the, the book is available wherever books are sold, both online and in, in person. I'm, heard, I'm hearing that in all kinds of stores, uh, including even grocery stores and um, camping supply places. Uh, my own personal website is the magnificentleaven.com, where leaven is spelled L-E-A-V-E-N, like leavening. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure the book can be found uh, wherever you look. Great. Paul, appreciate you taking a few minutes today, and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy your summer cooking outside, and we'll talk to you again sometime. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much.